interrupt this program to bring you Courage, the Cowardly Dog Month! Whole month of Courage, the Cowardly Dog! First appearing in 1996, it was picked up by Cartoon Network, who work in the middle of Burbank, and directed by cartoonist John Gilworth. Though many years have passed since the original air date, it's now time for Zack Morris to celebrate this great show! Well, old sport, what do you think? Hey guys, Zach Marsh here and welcome back to Courage Month. So, today's episodes we're going to be reviewing are Dome of Doom and Snowman's Revenge. So, let's get into both of those. Okay, so this first episode, Dome of Doom, is uh, very straightforward in that the bags wind up r renting a geodesic dome that's supposed to make fruit grow. So... It's, it, it, and, for, and for good reason we find out why they do this because it's as it starts out with them trying to grow plants and they're struggling quite a bit. Um, Muriel and Courage are actually trying to water a plant of I, it's, I'm not entirely sure what because it doesn't really bloom fu for fully enough to actually fruit bear any fruit or plants or whatever or, what, or vegetables or whatever it was supposed to grow because uh, it just um, dies immediately. Um, and, and meanwhile, Eustace is, try is rooting through all of the cabinets and fridge to try and find some food, but he can't find anything, um, and, and becomes upset and, and walks out of the walks out of the back farmhouse, demanding to know to know what they're doing what they're doing for lunch. Um, but Muriel merely tells him that he's looking at it and he sh and shows him the shriveled up plant. Um, and and Cur and Eustace just d disencourages him, encourages them, pointing out that uh, he, that they clearly don't have a green thumb like he does. At which point. Um, at which point, Miro suggests that he should take his green thumb and go into town to buy some groceries. But uh, he, but he merely remarks that he's that he doesn't want to spend money on groceries. At which point, a, a, a bit of a wind blow picks up and a newspaper winds up hitting your courage in the face. Um, Eustace actually plucks up the newspaper from Courage's face and winds up reading it and winds up reading it. And what we find out is that there's actually a, a an advertisement for for free food forever. Um, which which winds up catching Eustace's interest because he can eat f as much food as he wants whenever he wants for no price at all. So of course he jumps at that. Um, at which point at which point of va of the van from run who runs the show um, Mega Grow um, they actually uh, they actually come the guy actually comes to the house in, in his in his truck and and proceeds to install a geodesic dome around the house, which is so he he points out a state of the art and points out that it's that, that it's actually going to actually keep them keep their uh, yeah, enable them to create crops in any environment um and also hand, hands uses a comically large sta stack of contracts to to fill out but uh Eustace isn't really interested he just wants to know when they can eat um and eventually and eventually and while the guy and the guy stop kind of con keep, continues to side to side dodge the um Gert Eustace's uh, whole in he uses his entire thing where he's trying to get to eat and eventually uses gets sick of being ignored and kicks the entire stack of of um of contracts and tell and demands to know when they when they eat um but long last um at which point at which point the guy merely says that they can eat they then once they step inside the dome and activate it that they'll have food for the rest of their life and then hands them a, a, a bunch of complimentary seed packets before locking them in and, and welding the door shut which causes courage to freak out a little bit because he realizes there may be something a little bit more sinister going on um at which point, at which point, at which point, Eustace proceeds to put, to look around, wonder, wondering when all the free food is supposed to grow. But Miro then proceed, proceeds to read through, to show off the seed packets that they grew, um, which is what they were given, which is they're supposed to plant the seed packets, and uh, then then they're just supposed to to grow. So Eustace decides to actually open up all the seed packets at once and proceeds to pour them out all over the, over the ground. But uh, the seeds proceed to not sprout at all. Um, and which point, at which point, um, Muriel points out that they have to turn the dome on first, um, and then gestures them to the button, which just said, which is just a big label button that says, turn the dome on. Literally, literally just such a giant sign just pointing to it saying, this is how you turn the dome on, push this button. Um, so they decide to do that, which causes a tornado to actually appear inside the dome. And, uh, the, and long story short, it just causes this big raging storm that causes, that causes the bags to actually panic and get swept up in a little bit. And eventually Eustace and Muriel actually run, in, run inside and actually slam the door with Courage trying to follow in after them. Uh, but he actually can't because Eustace is currently holding the door shut so that Courage can't get in. Uh, much to Muriel's chagrin, pointing out that Courage is still out there, but he remarks that he isn't letting the storm in, at which point 
A stray bolt of lightning actually winds up hitting the doorknob, causing Eustace to become electrocuted and fly into Muriel's rocking chair. And and, and he kind of and he kind of sits there with a dazed look on his face as he just kind of re recuperates from the fact that he just got shot by lightning. Um, in that case, Courage then proceeds to run into the get and run to the house and and, bar and helps barricade the door and. And eventually the storm does indeed pass, and when the when the bags actually go and check out their new their, their farmlands, they note that there's a bunch of vegetables now stuck up now stuck everywhere and there's are actually growing out. And uh, also the farmhouse itself has actually been covered is actually now covered in vines a little bit because of the plants. But uh, there's now plant but there's now vegetables everywhere and they can now help themselves help themselves to whatever they want. Um, at which point Eustace merely, merely is just happy about the fact that he now has food forever. And then proceeds to yell to yell at um, Muriel and Kirsch to go hurry up and pick the plants. Um, and they do, but eventually, but but um, but immediately something sinister seems to seems to be afoot because Muriel actually hears some buzzing coming from one of the one of the tomatoes that she's plucking and notes that a bee must have gotten stuck inside one of them. Um, meanwhile, Kirsch is going to actually go pluck the, the seed pods and the so one of the seed pods, one of the peas actually growls at him. Which Kurt, with Courage just kind of telling her, just kind of trying to tell Mur Miro what's going on and what he ju what just happened. Um, but she doesn't fully understand it and then proceeds to uproot the entire pea pot, seed, seed on pod and then proceeds to drag it inside so that they can cook it up and make a vegetable soup. Um, but, uh, but as, but as they're actually preparing the vegetables, um, Kurt, Muriel points out that they don't have enough, um, olive oil, and asks Courage to go get some more from the basement, which Courage is reluctant to do, but decides to do what he's, as he's told him, proceeds to make his way to the basement, but then, um, Muriel is actually attacked by the, by the veg, by the vegetables, she's actually attacked by the sea, by the giant, um, by the, by the giant pea pot, pea pod stacks, um, thing that actually, that she actually wound up plucking, I don't know what the term, the stock? She wound up, the, the pea stock winds up attacking her and wrapping her up and tries to cook her, um, so Courage, so Courage tries to pull her free, which doesn't wind up working until he realizes that, that there's actually a cup of olive oil on the counter, so he picks that up and throws at her, which causes her to just slip out of the grip of the, grip of the pea pods, and then she, he manages to pull her way to, to safety, um, with the pea pod kind of just commandeering the kitchen and, and, keep, and keeping anybody from getting in. Um, at which point Meryl actually sla winds up sliding in front of the TV with, with uses wondering what's going on. Um, and Courage actually goes poke his head back inside to the kitchen to wonder if the peapod is still there and is still causing problems. And the peapods then proceed to just shoot peas at him, and and, and he winds up swallowing a whole bunch and and coughing them up. Um, at which point, at which point, Uses wonders what if, why they haven't make it, made lunch yet. But with, at which point, Muriel explains what's happening, which is that the peapod, the veggies are trying to eat him, eat them. But um, but Eustace merely remarks that she doesn't know what she's talking about and decides that the peas are, that everything is fine. Um, and then case in point, the remarks that if they aren't going to feed him, then he'll help himself and pulls out a head of lettuce, which then proceeds to bite Eustace on the head and st and he starts fighting with it. With Muriel actually whipping out her her rolling pin to actually fight fend off the pea pod and actually get it to actually fend off the not the pea pod but the cabbage and actually get it off its head. Um, and it does and eventually spits him up. Uh, then they proceed, and and at which point, um, several other vegetables proceed to join them to join them in the in the house. So they decide to actually run out of the house and actually try to escape. Um, with the with the various vegetables actually snarling at them a little bit. Um, and Eustace immediately tries the door to the geodome, but uh, since their current since the since the guy who installed it has since welded the door shut, they can't get out that way. So Courage instead decides to use a se several on hand methods to actually try and get the door open. He Opens up, he takes a he takes a rock and tries to throw it at the door, which only results in uses his foot getting injured. Then Kurt tries to ram it open with it ram it open with a log, which winds up being lodged down Eustace's throat, because of course uh, cartoon physics. Um, and then and then Kurt tries to shoot it with a cannonball, which only bounces off and and hits uses in the stomach, which causes the the thing to actually pop to the log to actually pop out of his mouth. Um, at which point he actually winds up angering a bunch of tomatoes, which then proceed to swarm after him like bees. Um, so, and then they, they proceed to sting him on the face, and he proceeds to actually run for, run as fast as he can from the from the bee tomatoes. Um, at which point, Courage decides at this point that they should probably read the fine print on their seed packets, uh, because he notices it on the ground and decides to pick it up, and notes that in addition to having the usual plant stuff, which is literally just called plant stuff, on the back of the, on the back of the bag, um, he also notes that they're also that they also contain a bunch of carnivorous animals such as hornets, such as hornets, piranhas, and a bunch of other nasty things you wouldn't want your in your food. Um, and realizing that they actually contain vicious animal DNA, Courage realizes that they're in that they're in a very dangerous state. Um, 
At which point they realize they actually, they, at which point the vegetables actually start swarming them again. And Muriel, Muriel, and Muriel points out that maybe they can use the dome to their advantage to actually take care of the plants. Um, and Kurt, so Courage starts pressing the button, starts pressing the button, and while he does get a couple of undesirable effects, one of which causes the plant, one of which actually summons rain, which causes the plants to grow faster, he eventually lands on snow, and the, and the vegetables actually wind up becoming frozen and fall asleep, um, with Miro remarking that she'd never been so happy to see frozen vegetables. Um, but at, at, at which point, Eustace is being, still being chased by the tomatoes, who have since gotten smart enough to actually wear a head, to wear, um, where, where, where are they called? Earmuffs? So that they actually don't freeze from the cold. So they actually run into the house and slam the door with the tomatoes actually ramming into the into the side of the house and actually just breaking against the wall. Um, so they wind up not being able to get into the house. At which point they, at which point Eustace and Mur Eustace, Muriel and Courage actually wind up boarding up the house and Mur Eustace again once asks if when they're actually going to eat, which Muriel finds is a bit offensive because as she points out, they're currently being attacked by killer vegetables and he decides that he still wants food. Um, and Eustace doesn't deny that, he's still hungry. He, that was the whole point he bought these and he hasn't really gotten a return on that yet. Um, but it... It was at this point where he decides to, where he decides to turn on the TV while they wait out the vegetables. Um, at which point they see a cabbage on the TV, which is revealed to be an actual cabbage, which proceeds to burst out of the proceeds to actually burst out of the um, out of the TV. And after giving sniffing Eustace's foot, actually decides to bite it. Um, and actually starts gnawing, starts gnawing at Eustace's shoe, which Eustace kicks it off, and it winds up eating the shoe. Um, at which point, the vegetables have now sw swarmed the house. Their vines are now covering everything and coming out of the very ceilings and walls. So they decide to actually flee, flee to the attic with Courage trying to fend it off with a series of of, of gar gardening tools. He tries to use a machete to actually send it off, but uh, that winds up being grabbed by the plants, and he, w and he winds up running back in the into the attic to actually get their lawnmower, which works at first, but then he winds up getting spun off and thrown back up the stairs. Um, at which point he he brings in a ca brings in their cow to actually graze on their on their um, plants, but the cow just winds up getting stripped bare and winds up getting eaten that way. So he doesn't wind up actually helping. At which point, Courage realizes he's out of options and just runs into the kitchen, into the into the attic where they're currently being swarmed by vegetables. Um, but at this point, but eventually he wind, he he winds up smelling, getting in a face full of uses a stinky foot, which uh, he remembers that the that the vegetables actually liked. So what he does is he takes off uses a stinky stinky sock. Um, he pours it into their pe he pours the he rings out the sweat into their pesticide spray and then proceeds to spray the vegetables with it. Which now that they all smell like 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 uses the stinky foot, they then proceed to actually eat one another. Um, and then eventually just wind up tearing them themselves into a big pul pulpy mess. Um, with courage with with courage and Muriel finally being happy, while uses decides to chow down on the on their remains. Um, which he which winds up which he winds up being happy about because now he actually gets food, which is what he was paying for. Um. And at which point, at which point the bat, the bags then proceed to go back to normal. Um, the the they actually call the call the guys and actually have them take the dome away so that it's no longer causing problems for them. Um, with Muriel and Courage actually curling up on Muriel's rocking chair and being and just being happy that everything's back to normal, except for Eustace who has since over engorged himself on vegetables and is now so heavy that his chair and the ch and the floor beneath it can't actually hold him up, so he winds up falling into the basement, which is kind of funny. Um, but in any case, yeah. Uh, this episode is just kind of really good because it because it is it's one of those blessings in disguise kind of things. Yeah. Um. So they wind up getting free food forever, but it's, it turns out that free food comes with a cost, which is that they all want to eat them. So yeah, this episode is kind of, this episode is kind of interesting and funny in that there's just this passive threat of vegetables just trying to attack everybody, which is kind of funny, but uh, also a little bit dark, and also the fact that Eustace finally does indeed get what he wanted, which is that he finally got got so much food that he actually gained weight. He, he's, it's implied that he's staying skinny because he doesn't eat enough, and now he finally ate enough and he actually gains some weight. So, that's kind of funny. But in any case, that's my review of that episode. Onward to the next one. Okay, so this episode, Snowman's Revenge, is interesting in that, uh... Okay, so this episode, Snowman's Revenge, actually shows the return of the snowman, and, uh, we learn a bit more about his backstory in this episode. So... Well, we, I mean, we, it is, this episode is very snowman-centric, and it does kind of explain why he is the way he is. And, uh, yeah, long story short, it's a very interesting back, very interesting backstory. So, yeah, this episode starts off with the snowman, um, currently sitting on an iceberg because the polar ice caps have melted. So, yeah, the ice, so, yeah, the, the North Pole has since melted, and 
the snowman is left behind with him barely able to survive but uh he, but his but his but all that really remains is is what's left of his workstation and he and himself on an iceberg so he quickly realizes that he actually needs to make himself a new home so he starts working on a new invention to actually create a new home for himself so, but he and he, and he contemplates whether or not he should return to the to the North Pole to actually make rebuild it. But uh, he then he then decides that, that 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 would be counterintuitive since, as he explains, he has too many memories there and he would not and he doesn't want to have to revisit them whenever, every time he every time he actually goes outside. So he decides instead that he's actually going to build a new West Pole, where which he then decides after spinning the globe to be nowhere Kansas. Um, at which point at which point um. At which point, Eustace, Eustace, Courage, and Muriel are actually r driving home in Eustace's truck, and Muriel is currently patching up Eustace's, Eustace's, um, Eustace's pants be because he ac accidentally broke them. I forget why. Uh, but he's but they're currently driving home, with Eustace, and Eustace currently doesn't have any pants um, as a result of that. But uh, as they're driving home, um, they, they suddenly note they suddenly note that it starts snowing, and uh, Eustace points out the pro that that should be impossible since they're currently in the middle of August and it should not be snowing. Uh, but, uh, but in any case, because of the snow, they actually wind up slipping and sliding around with Eustace merely remarking that they'll need to invest in snow tires at some point in the near future. Um, and they wind up and they wind up crashing into the side of into the side of their front porch. Um, with with them with and they get wind up getting out of the out of the out of the um, now wrecked truck and decide to actually go inside and to warm up. Um, and, and and as they go inside, they're actually hit with a blast of snow. With merely merely remarking that uh, Eustace must have set the thermostat too low, which sounds impo impossible, and it is. At which point they walk inside and they see the snowman sitting in Eustace's chair with his cold finger, um, his new wep his new invention that he uses to redesign to recreate the North Pole. And if you guys can't tell, that is once again another James Bond reference, which because again this guy is probably the best. Um, but, but in any case. But in case he then, he then greets the he then greets the um the bags in his normal fashion and then proclaims that that he has since declared the their their home the center of his new West Pole that he's building um and decides that in order to make it perfect that he's going to need them all to fulfill some duties um he asks Courage to make snow cones for them which uh which uh he which Courage reluctantly does but and um, while he and then he, he asks Muriel to provide entertainment so she goes upstairs to get her sitar and he asks Eustace to keep a, to keep a watchful eye out for when the for when the snow eventually blocks out the sun. So, and Eustace is a bit reluctant, but after being blasted, full blast by the cold, fi cold finger, he decides to actually just climb up the pole anyway and, and do what he was told. Um, and it quickly becomes apparent that they are not okay, because the sub the sub the sub-zero temperatures are actually causing them to freeze up and develop frostbite a little bit. Eustace is kind of freezing up a little bit. Meryl is having trouble playing her sitar because, um, she, because her finger, because as she mentions, her blister, her playing blisters have, have, um, icicles on them, which make it a little bit difficult to play. And Courage eventually decides to, eventually decides to stop using, to stop using, creating actual snow cones because he has icicles coming from his nose and everywhere else. So he decides to just break some of those off and make snow cones out of those. Um, which the snowman doesn't seem to notice the difference anyway, so it's fine. Um, and also there's a really funny scene where Courage tries to use a Yule Log to actually warm himself up. Um, at which point, Eustace, Eustace hollers from atop the West Pole that um, the sun's been blocked out. So, so he, t so Snowman actually tells them that it, tells him that he can come down, which he does. He actually just winds up falling out off the West Pole and d and right into the living room. Um, at which point, um, the Snowman actually remar remarks that they've been a very good big help with him, and he he start he started to see them like family and wonders if they would like to stay with him. Um, and, and, he, and but as he's trying to contemplate why what what he should call them since obviously they're not snowmen um, but he they, they the three of them actually start backing out and try to go out the back door but uh, they wind up freezing solid as a result and with um, Muriel and Eustace actually becoming frozen solid and unable to move um, with Courage trying to lick them to lick them back to back to normal but uh, he only winds up getting his tongue stuck um, so he winds up and he winds up being being frozen that way. Um, but eventually the snowman does, the snowman does eventually call, figure out something creative to, to call them and ask them what they think and if they would stay with him. And since they're obviously frozen, they don't respond. So he's very, he's moved to tears that they decide to stay with him and decide and start singing the song, You Freeze Up My Life, which is kind of, which is kind of a really fun musical number in this episode. And, uh, I recommend watching the original episode because it's a very funny sequence, but, uh, 
But in case, he then, but in case, now that he, as, as a, and so he uses the song to commemorate their newfound friendship, um, and start, and decides to start playing some activities with him. He starts playing, go, going into snowball fights with him. He starts playing board games with him. He tries to, he tries to play Old Maid with them at one point. Um, but as he, but as the, but as it becomes apparent that they're, that, um, he's, he's very lonely. It, be it becomes apparent that he really, that he really is just very lonely about being the last of the snowmen. Um, and eventually Courage kind of lets out a kind of a frozen muffled groan uh, out to, to let him know that he's kind of interested to hear the snowman's story. Um, so the snowman plucks him off of Muriel, which, uh, winds up resulting in, in his, in his tongue being broken because of his, because his tongue is currently frozen to Muriel, but, uh, in any case, in any case, he then sets Courage down and uses his chair and explains his backstory. Um, as it turn, as he explains, and and we've actually sort of met some of the characters in this backstory, but uh, not really because we haven't really seen them officially. Um, he be he begins to point out that, that back in the day, life was good. He used to hang out with his with his three best friends, Ivana, Jimbo, and Hohauser, and uh, if, and if, and, if, and he used to hang out with them, play games with them, eat snow cones with them, but uh, eventually. He winds up. He winds up. He these and, and this is kind of just something that's that's kind of funny. He as he remarks, well, not so much funny as it is kind of a, kind of touching on a very real world subject. But as he as he mentions the one day the the global warming just set in and caused the caused the ozone layer to just rip out rip, rip and tear into pieces, which which of course meant that the polar ice caps slowly started to melt and. Uh, while Snowman was lucky enough to survive, his friends weren't, and and Jim and in order, Jimbo, Jimbo, Holhauser, and Ivana wound up wound up melting and dying. So with that, he wound up becoming the last of the Snowman, and laments on the fact that it that he, there was nothing he could do, and that it ultimately wasn't their fault that they died, and that it was mankind who caused the ozone layer to to rip and collapse. Um, and and but and with that the with that this, after exposing his backstory, the snowman proceeds to sit down and sit down in Muriel's rocking chair and fall asleep. Um, at which point, you, Courage gets a bright idea, which which causes an idea bolt that just thaws him out. So he then proceeds to come up, but after coming up with this idea on thawing him out in the process because cartoon physics, he then comes up with an idea to actually go and patch up the ozone layer so that so that snowman can actually return home. And with that, he actually grabs Mur Muriel's needle and thread from uses his truck. Gets on a plane to go to the to go to go to the, where the hole in the ozone layer is, and then once he's near, once he's near where the ozone layer is, which the captain announces himself, and he's also named after John Dilworth, the creator of the show. Again, that's just a recurring thing. But uh, in any case, in any case, after Captain Dilworth announces that they're actually that they're actually near where the hole in the ozone layer is, Courage then just then takes use Mario's on sewing supplies, opens the window of the plane, which causes him to, his face to freak out a little bit. And then after throwing the needle and thread through the through a hole in the ozone layer and actually and actually kind of threading it through, he then proceeds to hang, dangle from it and then proceeds to patch up the hole in the ozone layer, which not only causes the the North Pole to actually return to normal and un, and unthaw, but it also causes J Jimbo, Ivana, and Holehousers to actually return back to normal and actually return to their normal to the normal snowmanny selves. Um, and and now that Courage has successfully saved the North Pole, he. Then comes in what he then comes in during that during that aforementioned Uno game during the aforementioned old main game, um, and bring and brings Snowman A's postcard, revealing that revealing that Courage has actually fixed everything and that the and that the North Pole has actually returned to normal, and Snowman is happy that his friends are now are now back and that his and that the North Pole has now since returned to normal, um, and then Ivana comes in to come and get him to come and get him and. And Snowman dec decides to embrace her, to embrace her and hold her in his arms, and it's implied that they had a romantic relationship before she melted. Um, and at which point, the snow the Snowman decides that they sh that they should finally go home, because since there's no place for them there. Um, and then proceeds to put the cold finger on his head, and they and they proceed and proceeds to make a frozen path for them to actually move to move on and go back home. Um, and with that, the, and without the cold finger to be there, the the the, the bag farmhouse eventually on un unfrosts, and, and as do uses and Muriel with. Yusus, with Muriel being happy that she's no longer frozen, and Yusus kind of complaining about the fact that he doesn't know where his pants are. Um, at which point it's revealed that, um, that Courage gave them the whole houser as a, as a present. Um, it's, it's kind of a mending of friendship. He, he wound up giving them, as a, giving them a new hat. Um, so, 
yeah so yeah in any case this episode is just interesting and that's uh it in, it kind of it further explains the backstory behind the snowman and and also kind of continues the whole the whole um the whole um james bond joke that he that he kind of continues onward and also his musical number is kind of amazing i should mention that he does have a musical number in this episode i've mentioned that before but it is kind of amazing um but yeah, this episode. But yeah, this episode overall is just about global warming and the dangers of not taking care of the environment. Because quite literally, um, the snowmen wound up being victims of global warming and die, and almost all of them die. So yeah, that is the, that is the important lesson behind this episode. Um, take care of the environment, or global warming will kill them all. So yeah, global war. So yeah, global warming is very much a dangerous thing, and this episode just kind of. Beats it over the head that it, that it is indeed global warming's fault that the polar ice caps melt in the first place, and it's implied that that's also that that's and it's kind of possible that that's what's happening in real life, hence why this this joke exists at all. But uh, yeah, this episode is just is just kind of interesting in that uh, the snowman's entire backstory is related to global warming's, which just emphasizes the point that you should take care of the environment so that the polar ice caps don't melt. But in any case, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter in the description below. Also, be sure to follow me on on, uh, on my Patreon down in the description below as well. Um, I do I do need help growing this channel, and I do want to make more projects like this. So, if you want to see more of these, by all means, link is down in the description. Just be sure to go check that out. Um, and also, finally, if you want to see more content from me, there's actually two ways you can do that. One is by checking out my Twitch down in the description. Um, I stream every Sunday at 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, and I've been streaming a bunch of horror games to go along with Courage Month. They're actually in the playlist as well so if you want to see those by all means link is again link is again link is down in the description just go check that out and also help me fulfill milestone because i'm trying to reach 50 people and, and there's more than enough of you over here so be sure to just go follow me over there so you don't miss my streams um and finally if you want to see more content from me then be sure to check out the videos linked in the end screen the top video is the most recent video it may or may not be this one where's the bomb video is a video recommended to you based on what you've already seen from me so if you want to try something new or see more of what you like, then be sure to check both of those videos out. But, regardless of whether or not you do any or all of those things, thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!